Hello to my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And today, this morning when I was doing my, trying to decide what to do for the day, um, I came across a tile that my friend Beth Peters shared on Facebook. And it had this pattern which is called Rings by Kat Kwan, and she's a CZT. And I really liked the pattern, but I wanted to do it in kind of a ribbon style because I failed at putting it into a circle. <laughs> I had done this five size tile um, just before the freeze hit down here in Houston. And so I hadn't done anything on it. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be pretty coming up here? And I've had um, several people say that they would like to know how I use the Lindy's Magicals because that's what I used on this and on several other tiles that I prep ahead of time. And so that's what I'm gonna show you today. And it's gonna be kind of a mess but it's going to be better than the first video that I did with the Lindy's Magicals. I've had this, uh, the Magicals, since November now. And so I've uh, come up with a little bit better technique, I think, for coloring my tiles. I don't especially like painting or coloring a tile after I've drawn on it, because to me, that takes away my zen. But I do enjoy playing with watercolors and coloring my tiles ahead of time, like I did on this one. Okay, so the basic tools that I have, this is a um, ceramic paint palette. I really like the ceramic ones. I've only got one. Um, and this is some of the Lindy's Magicals that I have, and I have a lot. These are the powders, and these are the shakers. And um, they're a very fine powder, almost like talc, talcum, talcum powder. Thank you, wrong thing. And uh, this is the shaker. So you really need to be careful with these because you can pour out too much too fast. So Lindy's Magicals are not watercolor. Okay, so I looked it up again on their website. And the, these are powdered dye-based pigments and they stain your paper. They don't float on top of your paper. And they also stain your fingers. So the tools I have today, I've got a few of my magicals. Um, here's a chart that I made of all the colors that I have. Um, this one came in a set, the shakers. And then these I bought, I think, two different sets. So I have a lot. It's an addiction. Um, so my colors. Um, this is a Jim Holtz Distress, Distress Sprayer. And I use that to uh, spray water on my tiles. I showed you this. This is a ceramic palette where I'm going to mix my colors. Um, optionally, you can put your tile down on whatever surface you're using and put uh, artist tape or thin painter's tape along the edges to keep them clean. And uh, I'll show you one of those. I have paper towels. I bought just a cheap set of miscellaneous brushes when I first started trying to 
play around with watercolors. And that's what um, this flat brush I'm going to use to paint water all over the top of my tile. And this one just to move things around if I need to. And I also will use it to get the powders out of the jars. Um, the other thing I have is two different jars of water. So this big jar is where I clean my brush. And then this smaller jar, which you might be able to see my granddaughter put uh, big eyes on it. But this one I use just for clean water for mixing my colors. And that's one thing I've learned through watching the watercolor videos on Skillshare and on YouTube is that it's best if you have two jars of water. Okay, I have gloves. So I'm going to put on the gloves. Um, one more thing that I have sitting here. This is a pick tool that's out of my Cricut. And sometimes when you get these tiles pretty wet, it's hard to get them off, off the surface that you're working on. Okay, so I have put on gloves because I don't like to get my fingers all stained. Um, move the paper towel to the side. And I think the first one that I'll do is just a regular size tile. This is Fabriano Tiepolo paper that I buy from Dick Blick in 22 by 30 inch sheets. And I cut it myself. Okay. Note to self, I should taking off the gloves because I can't get the masking tape down there with gloves on. Okay, so let's do this first. I want you to see how it looks if you have a clean border. And I may not get them all exactly the same, but it looks nice when you do this. And some people say that you should put water on both sides of your tile. And I do that, except when I'm masking like this, because it's too hard to get it put down if that other side is wet. Okay, so you can kind of see through this tape. so that you can set it up to be about the same all the way around. Okay. So, I haven't really decided what colors I'm gonna use. I am not a color expert. I am not a trained artist. I just play. But I do love this. The glittering gold can be added to anything. Most of these powders have some um, glittery sparkles in them, which is some of the reasons I really like them. Um, but one cannot have too much gold. Okay. <laughs> so, one more thing. This pipette, I believe is what you call it. I use that to um, put water into my ceramic dish. Okay. Um, if you've never used the Lindy's Magicals, they do have lots of different colors. They're not just one color. There are grains of different uh, pigments mixed in especially in these shakers. You can kind of see on here how there's some yellow and blue and different shades. They're just gorgeous. Um, let me show you on this one is Oktoberfest orange. And 
this is pretty close to what it does if you just sprinkle it on a page. Um, so let's do a little bit of this Laura's Wild Moth. And when I'm using just one color out of these pots, the way that I get it is to just put my brush down in there. And you can see, whoops, how much powder I pulled up. Not a lot. Okay. And now I'm going to get some water and just drop a little bit on here. Okay. I want to try to pick this up so you can see. Can you see those different colors that are showing up in there? Yeah, I don't want to drop one. Okay, so that's, sorry for hit the phone. So you can see the different colors that are in that one mix. And that was the Lara's Wild Mauve. And now I'm going to go ahead and mix them. And depending on how much of this tile I want to paint with this, or how thick or thin I want the stain to be, determines how much powder and how much water I use. Now, this is one of my favorite colors. So I have not cleaned my brush, but I'm going to go ahead and put some more on there because I know I'm going to use it. And Drop some more water. I don't know if you can see the sparkle that's in there. Okay, so that's going to be a pretty dark color. I always keep piece of paper handy to test that color. Okay, so that is for that one. Pretty close when you mix all the colors in there. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush. I think I've got enough of that color. I'm sorry, this is very crowded now and I keep bumping the camera. This, let me show you how the shakers work. So I can kind of tell from the top which side is the shaker. So that's the shaker. And this is for yodeling yellow. And it is a bright yellow. And so you can use this other side, but it comes out so fast that um, you can very easily get too much. And you don't need much of those. Okay, so there's the shaker top. And I'm gonna put a decent amount of powder down there. Okay, I'm gonna use the Pipe it again. And make sure my brush is clean. And I'm just going to mix it. And I'm putting a lot in here because I have several cards that I'm going to uh, play with here. 
may or may not show them all in this video, just show you the ones that um, work the best, look the best. Okay. See how bright that yellow is? Pretty cool. Okay. I think that one, before I use it, is definitely going to need more water. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Because that was pretty bright. Okay, so just try to get as much paint off as I can. And I'm going to clean my brush again. And I want to show you another shaker, Guten Tag Teal. Okay. I just think they're so pretty. <laughs> I just play. I first learned about these when I took the CZTAE 2020 classes from Debbie New and Stephanie Jennifer. And they used the magicals a lot. And I decided to order some and I've been hooked ever since. Okay. So this one, very pretty. And again, I wouldn't need much of these. I'm going to try to do a wash because that's how I like to do my tiles, not with a lot of bright colors. I like an easy to use background where I can use just a black micron and do like a classical tile, but it's already got beautiful colors on it. Okay, the last one I'm going to show is Andrea's Azalea. There you go. And I've cleaned my brush and it is wet, but it's not going to hurt anything if I stick it down in the pot. It won't leave any wet down in there unless I really had a heavy amount on my brush and I did not. So let's see how this one looks. And unfortunately on the camera, you don't see the sparkle that's in these. Um, if I wanted more sparkle, I could add the gold to any of these. So I'm going to do that now. Excuse my hand. Okay, so this is glittering gold. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the color that I already have just to show you that it mixes in and it doesn't really change the color. Okay. All right, so now I have four colors. I don't know that I'm going to use them all on this one, but there we go. these away. Okay. So I'm going to use the distress sprayer. 
we can get a layer and you can see that um, some of those powders have fallen on that tile <laughs> while I was spraying them. Uh, so I've sprayed the tile and I don't care if it's got a little bit of color already on it. And then I'm just making sure that um, I have it even. And I sprayed a couple more. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the clean water and this fat brush. And I'm going to get some of the purple. And I don't want it real heavy. Okay, go ahead and add more. I think I'm good. Um, while that is still nice and wet, I think I'm going to go ahead and try a little bit of this blue and let them kind of morph together because it's wet enough that they'll do that. Okay. I got just a splash of this red. I think I'm going to put that between. And at the end. Sorry. And now I'm going to get some yellow. Okay. So you can see it's puddling up over here. So I'm going to get my paper towel and just come over here and get that up. You can also do it with a brush. So I'm just going to get the excess off my brush. And then you can just come along the edge and get some of that up. You can also use your brush to uh, move these colors around if you want. I actually like how this one came out. I don't usually get it right the first time. Um, this is a little bit darker on the screen than it looks here in person, but it will also dry lighter than it looks. Not much. It doesn't, these powders don't lose much of their color like you see with watercolors. Okay, so I think I like that one. I'm going to just clean off some of this artist tape. And to remove it, kind of bend your tape at an angle like this and pull in that direction. And it will help keep your edges or keep the tape from pulling the paper up. Okay, let's do this one. I can do it with these gloves on. Okay, I'm pulling and see, maybe you can or can't see it. Pulled up a little bit of the paper, but it's not as bad if you'll do it at an angle. The other thing that you can do is uh, Use a blow dryer and heat up the tape if you find it's happening too much on yours. It gives kind of a rough look around the 
border if it doesn't pull up too much. So I don't mind it. And then all right. And it's going to be a little bit warped. I can at this point uh, go ahead and spray the back slightly. Then remember across, so this has a little bit of color on it, but that's okay. Try not to get it on the front. And that will help it to dry a little more flat. Okay. Now I'm going to put it on a table to dry. And I'm going to try a bookmark because that's what I would like to do in the video for today is to show a pattern for um, what I showed you at the beginning. And the name of that pattern is rings. Okay, so I have my sprayer and I haven't planned what to put on this one, but I'm going to spray One side. I think I need to move my water. Make it easier. As I keep bumping my phone. Okay, so I've sprayed it on one side, and now I'm just using this brush to get it even. Now I'm going to turn it over and with clean water, I'm going to wet this side too. Okay. So I haven't decided how I want to do this one. I'd spray it a little bit more. I think I'd like to do almost a rainbow effect. So I'm going to get one more color down here. Idlewise Moss Green. Okay. I love when the colors first start getting wet and separating. This one has a lot of glitter in it. Okay. Idlewise Moss Green. Okay, so I have it nice and wet. And I think I'll start purple. Reds, um, blue, okay, I'm going to get some of that color off, I don't want it super dark. Okay. 
Okay. Rinse my brush. Make it green. I'm going to get yellow. Okay, when it goes on really bright like that, then I'm going to rinse my brush. You make it your art. Do it as bright as you like it. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to add that final color. And then I'm going to go back up, get some more purple. I'm going to put a little bit more up here because purple is my favorite color. Okay, so I tried to do this keeping the uh, Of paper wet the whole time. So this is what I have. And I like it. And this is where this little tool comes in handy as I can get under it. Because it's wet, it's hard for me to get uh, these gloves under there to pick it up. Okay, so that's another way that I do it. And you can also dry those with a hair dryer. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more way that you can do a tile. And so this is a big one, and this one will show you how these look when uh, you're not mixing them up. So let me get the orange. So here's Oktoberfest orange, um, yodeling yellow. Let's see. Sorry again. This is a leader Holson Laurel. Uh, there's, uh, let's see, this is a really pretty blue, Bavarian blue. Mm. I don't want to put too much on there. Okay. So I think I'll use the Oompa pink. Yellow. We'll just play. You never know what to do, seriously. It's always just hit or miss. But I use all my tiles anyway, even if it's just for practice or my granddaughters get to play with them. So I'm wetting both sides again. I can flip it over because this one already, well, they both have marks now. Okay, we'll stay on this side. I should have cleaned my uh, board before I put that one on there. That's okay. All right, so, um, did I mention that you can dry these tiles with a hair dryer? All right, so this is the Oom Papa pink. Um, so you can dry with a hair dryer or just let them air dry. Okay, so there's just the powder. And now I'm going to spray a little bit more on top. Uh, let's do the um, Oktoberfest orange. And 
It's fun when they start to spread. Do some of the yodeling yellow. And let her have some laurel. Okay. Now I'm going to spray a lot of water on her. And you could just leave it like this, but I am going to show you that you can put a plastic bag over here and then just kind of move things around. And see, it's starting to almost look like mud, so I don't want to move that section too much more. So, and just pull it up, set it aside. And this is where, again, the paper towel and the other brush come in handy because I don't like some of this color here. So I can just kind of clean up a little bit of that. Um, you may find, like there, it looked like a bubble, but you'll need to kind of pop those bubbles. If there's a section that doesn't have color, just kind of tap around on it. You know, make it your art. Um, make sure you keep your brush clean between colors. You can add more water. You could drop more colors on there now if you wanted to. Okay, so that's how you do it with spray. Uh, spraying the water on there and then tapping the powders. Um, you can do it with the same thing, you know, getting just a tiny bit out of these and tapping them on there if you want to have the powder on there like you did with these hopefully that makes sense um i have some lindy sprays that i haven't tested yet but uh, when i do i'll let you know okay so i'm going to stop here and let my book mark dry and then show you how to do that pattern called rings. All right, I have cleaned off the palette and cleaned up my desk a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I'm going to try these two with just my hair dryer. You have wet both sides. You can turn it over and keep drying from both sides. That's the flatten it a little bit. I have found that my tiles never go completely flat after I've wet them. Tried ironing them and put books and stuff on top of them and it helps, but never get them flat. So I don't know what I'm doing. This is a cool pattern here. Yeah. 
Try to shape on this one. Try to. We get one more. Okay, so this is the last one that we did. I really like this side actually better than the other side. <laughs> Took it off of the board here. Looked at the other side. Went, oh my God, it's so pretty. I wish the mic could come out like this every time. I had to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe that happens when I put the plastic bag on top of it. Okay. So those are dry and now I'm going to pause it again and change your my work surface. Okay, before I forget, I want to say that uh, I have a good amount of paint that I used in each one of these little parts of this paint palette. And I am going to just leave them in there and let them dry. And then when I come back later, I can just add water and use them again. And I will continue to use this palette, add water or add more paint until I get to a point where I'm ready to wash it out. But uh, I really like this palette. I think I got it from Dick Blick. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do this pattern. And I'm going to do it on this bookmark that I just showed you how to do. And that's basically how I did this one was I just got color and washed it across like that. And a different color here and a different color there. But it was the basically the same way that I did that. Okay, I have a corner cutter, so I'm going to trim the corners on this. And it looks like I got a little bit extra paint on here, like down at the bottom, but it's okay. Okay. And this pattern if I show you basically how it's done um, I don't think I'm doing it exactly the way that uh, the original CZT was doing it but this is the way I like it and it works out the best for me is uh, start with the circle and then I'm going to put two petals hers were kind of big and I'll try to kind of show you how she did it okay and then we're going to Put kind of an R down here. <clears throat> and then it has another big 
petal that comes up here. So try to decide how big you want that petal and then go ahead and start your next flower. Okay, both sides. And on mine, they will never, ever be consistent. And that's okay. Not looking for perfect, thankfully. <laughs> okay, so now that I have this next one, then I'm going to come and make the third petal because I want it to meet the bottom of that one. Okay, so again, I'm going to try to decide how tall I want it to be, come up a little bit. And I like the way that Beth did her petals. They were more like this. Long and slender. Okay, and now I'm going to come down here and put this one in, have it go behind a little bit, come back down. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on that. And again, that is Rings by Kat Kwan. She's a certified Pentangle teacher. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And do my first center. Do my petals on each side. And here's my aura or the bottom of the kind of a cup. I'm not sure how you describe that. Okay, so I want my petals to come up about that high, I think. So I'm going to come up just above that and start my next flower. Now the top of that flower. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to move this. I'm going to offset it a little bit. Just I don't want it to look perfectly centered the whole way because I won't get it perfectly centered. So I'm going to purposely move it. So this paper didn't uh, warp too much, you can see. All right, so now we're going to go to this one, do the top. Okay. I still struggle with figuring out how far apart to get these. I'm making this one a little bit smaller. Okay. Now the top of that one. So now I'm going to go back to the center. Okay. 
I find that my pins do better with these um, powders. We call it. Um, dye-based pigments because they're stains. Now, if there's a lot of glitter in there, then you can end up with uh, stuff that can clog your pen. But for the most part, I find that uh, I don't have trouble with my pens when I'm doing the Lindy's Magicals. Okay, one more. Okay. Back this up a little bit. Okay, so now you can see the whole thing. And the next thing that I want to do is add some hatch marks on each of these petals. So basically, right at the edge of that ring or center. And you can, if you wanted to, darken these in. Leave a little white spot there. So, Again. <clears throat> so that's all I'm doing is putting those little hatch marks. And I think I'm going to go all the way down to the petals in this direction. And then I'll turn my tile. So you're not having to watch me spin this all the time. I love how these pink and blue, I mean um, pink and purple came together. Okay, so now I'm going to turn actually this way. I want to go in this direction. Okay. So I have been trying to think of something to do for my next YouTube video when I saw the tile that Beth Peters had shared on Facebook. And uh, so I started playing with the pattern and trying to make it go in a circle the way that she had. <clears throat> and was not doing very well. So I thought, well, let me try playing with it as a ribbon. And I happened to pull out this 
thigh size tile. I thought that would be pretty going up that wave of color. And I thought I'd like to share it with you guys. So here we are. Okay. So I add have my uh, graphite pencil and a tortillon, and I'm just going to add some graphite around the center of these where I have the hatch marks, and then a little where it goes behind. And I think I'm going to add a little bit along this line because it makes it look like it's kind of a cup along the bottom. Okay, just continue to add the same shading on each one. Or shade it the way that you would like it. You might want to shade the inside of each at the bottom. I really like how these colors blend. They're very similar to watercolors, but they are a stain. Okay, so now I'm going to get my tortillon and just soften these. You do the amount of shading that you like. I know some people like to put a lot. I do mine lightly. I have to stay away from the Lindy's website. I want to buy all the colors. <laughs> And you can mix colors just like you do with watercolors. Oops. To go back, I must there. They have embossing powders. But I don't do that, so I haven't tried those. Okay. And I missed putting a little bit of shadow here and here. And I'm just going to keep this one simple since we had all the time watching how to do the watercolors. So. All right. I think I'm going to put my chalk down here. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them. Like I said, I'm not a pro at this, but I just 
play. What if I do this? What if I do that? And uh, I really enjoy it. So, see, these didn't warp too terribly bad. I don't know if you can see the spark on this. It's got a lot of sparkle. And then this one looks like a explosion of color. And then there's the back. I love both sides. All right. That was fun. Enjoyed sharing with you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And I'd love to hear your comments. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I would love to see whatever tile you make. So I hope you have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you later. Bye.